Hey guys, what's going on? Steven back again, and I'm back with another 40k video from Wes Hammer. So the subject for today's video is all about demons, and the topic for today's video is five obscure demons you need to know about. So you need to know about these demons. I have no idea what they even could be. Um, I'm guessing they're probably demons from like outside the solar system or something like that. That's what I'm guessing, because I mean who knows what's out there you know isn't that where tyranids came from they just came from outside the solar system and just kind of just came in from from all sides and stuff so i mean who knows what's out there but anyways let's get on to the video and find out what they are here we go if you've been following Warhammer 40k for any length of time, then you've definitely seen a whole host of different types of demons. Mm -hmm. From the savage and towering bloodthirsters of corn, all the way down to the tiny and hilarious Nurglings. and also admittedly still terrifying demons known as Nurglings. Mm -hmm. But Warhammer 40k is a massive universe and yes, it's it full is. of obscure demons that very rarely get highlighted in the lore. And some That's of kind these of things shame. are absolutely crazy. From a shattered demon that fused with an imperial warship, to be reborn as a new demon lord. Psychic ghosts that are that generated when cool. psychers don't have full control over their abilities and exist demon as lordship. special space vampires that delight in causing terror. That was There's even cool. a host of demons that exist solely to enforce contracts. And those contracts may see you becoming rich beyond your wildest contracts? dreams. But they're also just as likely to see you get dragged kicking and screaming Ooh. into the void. We're going to be talking about all that and a whole lot more. But first, a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, and then we're going to dive headfirst into the grimdark. I wanted to tell you all about how I keep Demon such an amazing Lord beer ship. with the help of this video's sponsor, Manscaped, the global men's cool. lifestyle brand that is yeah, disrupting the beer see, market and is trusted you know, by more them than 8 able million to men worldwide. Manscaped's got this awesome beer in, because, you know, there is so that helps you grow and maintain a magnificent lore. beard. It I'm sure it's probably hard to be and like, this thing is awesome. focus on all different these different things, you know what I mean? You control with this nifty little zoom wheel on the handle. I find it to be super convenient, as in the past I've had to keep a bag of accessories for pretty much every trimmer that I own. It also comes with the high quality essentials that you need to keep your beard looking fantastic, like a nifty beard comb, beard scissors, and a beard brush. These will help keep your beard looking its absolute best. Pro tip from me to you, and this is one that I see people mess up all the time. When you're shaving, take two fingers like this, place them right above your Adam's apple. You want to shave everything below that and nothing above. If you leave too much down here, then that's just a neck beard and nobody wants that. And if you go too high, you're going to end up with a chin strap. And I don't care what anybody says, chin straps look terrible. Especially if you're a little chubby like me. I used to have a chin strap and whenever I went like this, the double chin would just roll out past the beard. It, it looks terrible. All it does is frame your it's double chin. a lot of really cool models. If you cool go to manscaped.com today, you can get 20% off plus free shipping when you use the promo code WESHAMMER at checkout. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code WESHAMMER at manscaped.com. Big thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Number five, the Eye of the Abyss. For this entry, we're gonna be diving back into the Kalexis sector, uh, one of the most dangerous and mysterious sections of space within the entirety of the 40K universe. Okay. There's an area here known as Hazaroth's Abyss, it is a vast and barren subsector, lightless and cold, and exists as something of a stellar God, graveyard. Scourge. The sections of this area that are not just vast expanses of empty void are scattered with the debris of dead star systems and long frozen worlds. In fact, the only stars here that are still active are incredibly old and have grown fat, bloated, and dim. There are people that live here, but it is scarcely populated and Not incredibly bad. difficult to navigate through as the warp routes that lead through the abyss are known to be some of the galaxy's most unpredictable. In the section of the warp that connects to the abyss, it is said that long ago, there was an incredibly powerful demonic entity that met an untimely end. We don't know what their name was or what exactly happened to them, but the aftermath of this event saw them shattered into thousands of pieces. Kind of One like of those shards came. would escape destruction when by chance, it came across a drifting space hulk in the warp a long dead ship that had gone unhelmed for countless years. Like oh, wow. a suckling demonic scavenger, the shard began to merge with the ship, feasting on the ancient corpses of the previous crew and the ship's dormant machine spirit. It absorbed all of their knowledge, and as time moved forward, the shard would regain its sentience and come to fully fuse with the long lost vessel. Through oh, this wow. bizarre union, a new demon lord was born, cast in the form of an imperial warship. 
This thing is known as the Eye of the Abyss, and mm. it, along with the parasitic colony cool. of lesser warp entities that dwell within its bloated carcass, lie in wait in Hazaros warp roots, waiting to ambush vessels that are attempting to navigate this dangerous area. Now, see, that is cool, but it's like, where would you... How would you bring that in, like, you know, lore-wise, story-wise, you know, things like that, because you got all these different other things going on. I mean, it's cool. I'd like to, you know, hear more about it, but it's like, where do you just bring in, like, this one demon lord ship? You know what I mean? It's like, how do you bring something like that? Because I'm sure it's not... I'm assuming it's not related to any of the four chaos gods, so it's like... How, how do you, you know... How do you bring that into the lore somewhere, somehow, you know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of one of the things with Warhammer, there's so much lore. It's just some things you just can't add on or continue with, you know what I mean? The thing is, even if its prey is able to act quickly enough and drop out of the warp, this demon has the remarkable ability to follow them right on through, right into the physical universe which is a ridiculous oh, wow. feat of power for a warp entity, as even the strongest greater demons still require a vast cult in order to summon them into real space. The fact that the Eye of the Abyss can just do this at will is frankly ridiculous. It appears as a five kilometer long heavy Imperial cruiser that has been so twisted and warped that it's impossible to tell its exact pattern. It is covered in thousands of distinct demonic entities that trail across its surface like mites on a whale each engaged in a cackling yeah. circus of violence and debauchery. Massive rune-shaped fields of burning, broiling warp matter <laughs> act as its source of ammunition that the greater demonic entities that serve as the Eye of the Void's cannons use to hurl or vomit forth explosive projectiles across the void. The ammunition that it fires is horrifically corrupted and can cause a ship hit by it to immediately begin to corrode on impact. The bubbling wow. liquor at the impact point not only beginning to tear huge sections of the ship open to the void, but also giving birth to hordes of demonic entities that rip and tear at the ship's hull, desperate to get inside and feast on the crew within. That's All the insane. while, the etheric energy generated by the ammunition leaches inside of the ship infecting the minds of all that come really contact you can do with that like how you introduce that you know frothing madness if that wasn't bad enough, just one the eye of the abyss ship, also you know? wields crackling tendrils of empowered demonic flesh that extend out for a kilometer and lash out at anything within range right up front is an enormous 400 meter wide bloodshot eyeball that has come to replace the vessel's command cathedral now as ridiculous of a hmm. feat as a demon just summoning itself into real space is this is admittedly something that the ship is not capable of maintaining indefinitely. And normally the Eye of the Abyss can only maintain this for a couple of hours before being forced to return to the Immaterium. This, oh, however, is more okay. than enough time for the ship to destroy its prey and drag the souls of its damned crew back into the warp. In my ah, opinion, the Eye okay. of the Abyss is one of the coolest demonic entities I've personally yeah, ever read cool, about. It is cool, but what do you and do with I something really like that? And I really hope we get to I mean? see more of this thing in the future. Number four, the Lady of the Voids. Across space and time, there are tales of malevolent entities that dwell deep within the ocean, rising to the surface only to prey upon the unsuspecting mortals that would dare sail through their territory uninvited. They often take the form of beautiful women with angelic voices who can twist and turn the hearts and minds of mortal men, infecting them with insanity and causing them to forego their base. Now, here's another interesting question. Why are there no, like, battleships in 40k? You know, I'm sure, like, some of these o some of these planets have oceans and stuff like that, so... No, no... I don't know, battleships, aircraft carriers, things like that? I mean... I mean, yeah, it'd be... I guess it kind of makes sense, because now they're kind of limited to just that planet you know can't really pick up a who the hell's calling me um you know can't really pick up like a battleship and, and take it away you know to an, another planet but i don't know just an idea I figure some of these planets have oceans so like why not battleships survival instincts to throw themselves overboard the sailor who wanted nothing more than a kiss 
is instead dragged down into a cold, watery grave. In our history, we refer to such entities as sirens, but within the warp routes that connect the stars in the 42nd millennium, these legends have come to take on a different form entirely, one that spacefarers refer to as the Lady of the Voids, a foul demon of Slanesh that lurks between the stars, a terrifying oh, a witch queen whose demon. only desire is to sunder vessels and tear the living breath Ooh. from its crewmen's bodies. Although they are without a doubt demons of Slanesh, we don't exactly know what breed of demon they are, and unlike other demons whose etheric energy in the warp is only able to ineffectually follow after a ship but not harm it so long as their geller fields remain active, the Lady of the Voids is far more equipped to take on such prey by taking advantage of a moment of mental weakness. The Lady's many voices scream and moan in the patterns of the warp, their dreadful song enrapturing any that can hear it, piercing the ears and numbing weak minds. To those who have become That's afflicted cool. by the song, the lady appears in their subconscious as the most beautiful person they can imagine, <laughs> their sanity quickly deteriorating as the warp song melts their mind and eventually a frenzied madness will take over them. There are documented That's reports of crewmen who have heard such a serenade mutilating themselves or others in an attempt to destroy the tech devices that keep the Geller fields active, or in some cases, open the vessel's like seal gates to let the cold sucking void inside. Once inside a ship, ah, the demon okay. will happily sweep through the vessel at the head of a growing horde of insane crewmen, her song echoing down the halls, and with each reverberation, multiplying the suffering of her enslaved puppets in an That's orgy cool. of destruction and death. There are other reports of a Lady of the Voids materializing inside of the mind of a weak-willed astropath that willingly let her in. The creature burst forth in a Control violent explosion of viscera and gore, emerging Ooh. from the ruined body as a twisted amalgamation of hundreds of different women, their faces, Ooh. arms, and mouths facing in different directions, her torso appearing as a hideous mix of woman, crab, and bloated toad, Ooh. whilst half of her limbs end in spiny pincers. It's difficult to determine just how many vessels within the Kalexis sector have been lost to such an attack, but thankfully, there have been a few survivors who were able to make reports to the Inquisition, and most of these survivors took the form of tech adepts of the Adeptus Mechanicus, whose rejection of the flesh and devotion to the machine protected them from the uh, lady's psychic yeah, protects attacks. Them from that we don't stuff. know how many of them are out there, or if the Lady of the Voids is simply a precursor to an entirely new wave of Slaneshi demons, but that as of right now, cool. they remain a terrifying All threat to demon? anyone who would attempt or sail demons? within the Kalexis sector. That's kind of cool. Number kinda three, like one. the Glitchlings of Nurgle. Okay, so the last couple entries were a bit heavy, so let's talk about something that's a little bit more comical. It, but admittedly, at the end of the day, this is still Warhammer 40k, so it's got to be super grimdark. Everybody knows about Nurglings, the tiny little bloated and jolly mites of Nurgle, <laughs> the Plague Lord's most special little children that love to bite, chew, and roll around on the battlefield like a pestilent little swarm of jolly imps. <laughs> These little terrible bastards are great and everybody loves them. Even if you're not a fan of chaos, you can't not love the Nurglings. But did you know that Nurglings have a disturbing mechanical cousin known as the Glitchlings? The major difference between a Nurgling and a Glitchling is that the Nurglings spread plagues that rot the flesh and corrupt the body, whereas the techno-plagues of the Glitchlings infect circuitry, contaminate mechanical parts, and degrade oh, metal. Machines. You see, the Glitchlings were first created when the Primarch of the Iron Warriors, Perturabo, made a pact with Nurgle to pervert the eight rituals of possession. They did this in order to turn them against the Forge world known as Toil. This was a combined effort by not just uh, the Iron so those Warriors, go after but also and stuff. all of okay. the machines of this world as they were corrupted into nightmarish cybernetic horrors, a blasphemous fusion of corrupted steel and demonic flesh. Now, amongst these grotesque mechanical creatures were hordes of tiny, plumped, nurgling-shaped abominations that crackled with demonic scrap code and glowed with baleful energy. These things ran wild across the battlefield, while the defenders of the Forge World's guns were trained on larger targets. Their disruptive aura, causing cogitators, electrolumens, and machine spirits to falter or go haywire. This caused the Imperial Defender's the defense systems and, the and small weapons ones. to fail them, Figuring as the, the small machine ones plague known as the Gellerpox ran rampant. Wherever the Glitchlings end up, long-cherished guns and fine working order suddenly fail. Reliable servitors stumble to a grinding halt, and tanks in pristine condition suddenly rust as if aged hundreds of years in the blink of an eye. Although the Glitchlings' greatest joy is disrupting the technology of mortal races, they are malicious, evil little bastards 
that find it immensely entertaining to stab or bite foes that are distracted by the malfunctioning weapons. Although relatively weak one-on-one, -on -one, a glitchling secretes a noxious substance that covers their claws, teeth, and tiny little blades so that any wound they cause is full of infectious disease. Their one true joy in life is spreading mayhem. They gurgle nonsensical words and emit spark-filled belches as they roll across the battlefield in small packs of gibbering, laughing gremlins. Ooh. It's not exactly known what their connection with the Gellerpox virus ultimately is, but without fail, every single major outbreak that's been reported so far was accompanied by an entire host of these tiny mischief makers. Number 2. The Astral Spectres Being born into the Imperium of Man as a Psyker is a one-way ticket to a very hard life. They are often either mistreated, hunted, or persecuted, and are seen as a constant source of fear and anxiety, even though most psychers are born with relatively harmless powers that make them more of an outcast than anything else. These abilities can take the form of somebody being able to read another person's thoughts or emotions. However, there are individuals who are born with particularly violent and dangerous psychic abilities, and without proper training and discipline, they can become an immediate threat to everything and everyone wild. around them. When said psychic powers are wielded by those who are said to be weak in faith or will, the energy they generate can congeal within the fabric of the warp to form a terrifying creature known as an astral specter, a malevolent shadow, a creature made of pure psychic runoff. That energy is not unlimited, however, and thus the creatures like exist letter. as an ethereal vampire that replenishes their own energy by devouring the souls of mortal men and women. The astral specters have shown a perverse obsession with causing fear, relishing in the terror their attacks generate. They are drawn to fear and will expend great efforts to cause it. It's almost like they are addicted to it, as there are many reports of specters putting themselves at risk in order to terrify a potential victim, appearing in their true nightmarish form. As no two psychers are wholly unique, the astral specters they generate can also come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. They do, uh, however, so have a few traits in common. Most are said to be comprised of patches of semi-translucent shadows and maintain a That's vaguely humanoid pretty appearance, cool and pretty scary even though the their body time. does not possess an actual physical form. They wield a wide array of different psychic abilities, and it is said that their presence unnerves all sentient creatures in their vicinity, often causing them to experience a wide array of psychic phenomena. When a specter attacks, it will almost always target a psyker first. Now, first and foremost, the bountiful the waste of energy they provide is oh, far yeah. more nourishing to a specter than any regular person. Right. And okay, conversely, that makes sense. as they are a being wrought from the ethereal energies of the immaterium, the psychers pose a much more significant threat to them. They will attempt to manipulate the minds of weaker opponents, causing them to interfere with or even attack their allies. If cornered, they will unleash their psychic powers in an all-out attack or even attempt to possess one of their targets. They are cunning and intelligent and always seek to take a host who is either capable of fighting their way out of a situation or by possessing an individual their allies will not attack. For some unknown reason, sightings of astral specters have been on the rise within the Kalexis sector, appearing in large quantities in areas dominated by violence where great numbers of innocents have been killed. Whatever the exact cause of this phenomena is, the Inquisition has been monitoring the situation carefully. Number 1. The Assessors of the Black Tauntine The final demon that oh, I want to talk about today ones. is one that we don't get to see in the lore very often, as they have a very specific purpose. They're known as the Assessors of the Black Tauntine. And if you don't know what a Tauntine is, it's actually a real world thing. It's a contract in which all of the signers are paid dividends. Now, said dividends are small at first, but when each shareholder dies, all of their shares and wealth get added to the pool and thus further enrich the living shareholders. The value continuing to go up and hmm. up as less and less shareholders turn up to collect each year. I'm not a legal or history buff, so I'm sure somebody in the comments section knows a lot more about these types of arrangements than I do, but that's the basic gist of it. These types of contracts are something that are relatively common within the Imperium of Man and are used by guild members or brotherhoods from different orders. They are commonly seen as a tradition of the poor, hive manufactory workers signing these holy contracts in blood from their own pierced fingers. Most will pledge what little they have to the hands of the merchant guilders at some form of signing ceremony. The wow. value of the compact to be repaid to the signees as the others begin to die off. It's literally gambling with your life, but as we've seen the horrors of what it's like to live in the Underhive, most who enter into such an agreement potentially felt like they didn't have much of a choice. 
This concept is not unique to the, got Imperium, to lose. as the ruinous powers have recast the tradition in an unholy mockery known as the Black Tauntines. They are a murderous compact, scribed in filth upon human skin, made by the ignorant with demons for the betterment of sorcerers. Instead of the contract being assessed by an imperial clerk that sits behind a desk covered in stacks of imperial thrones, one of the most common currencies used within the Imperium, these contracts are enforced by the demonic assessors, who manifest to bestow the sorcerer who created it with powers pulled directly from the warp, taking oh, only wow. a single soul at a time as payment. So this is how it works. A sorcerer creates the contract, mm -hmm. then convinces a bunch of laborers to sign it. The okay. assessors show up to claim payment in the form of one soul at a time, snatching away one of the workers, and then with each death, the sorcerer bestows payment on all the living signees and draws a little bit more power out of the war. In the late 5th hmm. century of M41, there was okay, an infamous account of a disguised sorcerer creating a black tauntine in a glass manufactorum in outer Tarsus. It was believed the sorcerer was able to convince thousands of hab dwellers to sign the blasphemous contract. Everything seemed normal at first, until they began to appear. Malevolent cloaked entities who would materialize each day to drag away a single screaming soul as payment for the potency of an inner circle of the glassmakers killed. The heretic sorcerer and his brotherhood bestowing a few thrones upon the other workers with each victim they took. Whatever the assessor's terrifying true form actually is, is unknown, as they exist as shadows beneath rotten cloaks. They appear as a dire man-shaped being with gnarled, twisted fingers that often resemble thrashing tentacles or elongated needle-like talons. They carry with them a massive jagged hook at the end of a long polearm that like they use to drag their prey into the war. Type of thing. As threatening as this weapon is, they don't actually need it, as it is said that the assessor's gaze and eldritch words are enough to crush the mind and compel their victims but no, it just kind of looks cool. They don't simply manifest to claim payment, but will also appear to defend a compact. Any attacks made on the signees or the sorcerer who created the Tauntine will usher forth the vengeance of the warp in the form of the assessors. Most of these contracts have diabolical yet so they admittedly will defend simple them too. terms, but there are accounts huh. of some that have increasingly esoteric rules that must be followed. A signee or even one of the sorcerers breaking said terms will invite the assessor's wrath. What's really interesting about these guys is how frankly not chaotic they are. They're yeah, definitely I mean, evil, but they have guidelines that they hold the sacred and well, must follow. It's said that if one was crazy enough to do so, the assessors can actually be debated in lawyerly high gothic on the existence of loopholes. That's However, cool it's also said that doing so is ultimately futile and will only buy one's time as success or failure ends in pretty much the same result. The only difference being the anger of the assessor when it slaughters one foolish enough to act as a proctor to demons. And that was five super obscure creepy demons from Warhammer 40k that I feel more people need to talk about. Hmm. Which one was your favorite? Which one did you find the most creepy? And do you know of any other super obscure monsters, demons, cool, or aliens from Warhammer? All right, so there we go. There's five obscure demons that you need to know about. That was actually um very cool. They were very interesting. But once again, it's like, how do you bring things like that, you know, into you know, into lore, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you can write, like, a book about, like, you know, um, uh, the, the demon ship and stuff like that, you know, oh, a ship, you know, goes astray and, and encounters this and stuff, but it's not like you can really do, it, it seems like you can't really do too much with it, it's not like you can go off to a planet and try to, like, invade a planet or anything like that, you know what I mean? So it's just kind of like a, you know, it's just kind of like its own little little thing, and it just seems like it'd be hard to bring really any of these um, uh, into into the lore and stuff like that. Except maybe the um, was it the glitchlings? Those, yeah, those can you know you can definitely bring those into lore, no problem. But like things like this, it's like it's like a one off thing. You know, it's not like you can really do much you know what i mean uh but it is very cool you know a, a demon lord battle cruiser that's pretty badass not gonna lie that's that's kind of cool um the lady of the void or voids because he was saying voids a lot i don't know if he meant to say that um that is pretty cool that that's pretty pretty badass trying to uh a slaneshi demon 
kind of like a siren, you know, playing a song and trying to get into people's minds to kind of like corrupt them and, and um, you know, kind of get them to sabotage the ships so that way you can go in and infect the ship. That's kind of cool. I wonder if they're, because I mean, I've never heard of, of the Lady of the Void before. So I wonder, since it is a Slaneshi demon, are there other demons that the Chaos Gods have that we don't know about because they're not, you know, on the battlefield. Like, you know, obviously we know Bloodthirsters and, and Keeper of Secrets and and Flamers of Zinch and Demonettes and, and Bloodletters and stuff like that. But are there other demons? Does, like, Corn have or does, like, any of the other Chaos Gods have something like like this that we don't actually see on the battlefield I don't know curiosity you know are there other chaos demons that that the chaos gods have but we just don't see them because like games workshop doesn't make any models for them they're not on the battlefield things like that I'm very curious uh, glitchlings are funny those things are uh, are kind of cool but they you know make sense uh, you know go after uh, machinery and stuff like that, pretty, you know, pretty straightforward, you know, I mean, you see those little teeny tiny things, you don't really think too much about them, you know, obviously, you want to focus on the, 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 the big demons, you know, and not these little things, but the little things, um, can cause quite a, quite a havoc, um, yeah, the astral specters, those things are pretty cool, but once again, like, where would you really bring this into the lore it kind of seems like it'd be like a a one-off thing that you kind of like i don't know maybe like write a short story or maybe one book about but it's not like you really bring something like this into like i don't know the full lore that is pretty cool and pretty creepy at the same time i'm not gonna lie i don't know where they get these pictures but some of these pictures are pretty damn cool uh but yeah those are very interesting as well and then of course the um assessors of the black tontine that that's pretty cool and like you said you know they're not they're evil but they're not they're evil but they're not you know because especially at the end you know they'll go and defend um what people who signed it and stuff like that or the sorcerer who created it like i guess if they get in trouble and stuff like that the assessors will go and defend them and stuff so that's kind of like kind of didn't really like don't really expect that like these things would come and like defend them i don't know but still very interesting very cool actually um just a very twisted payment method <laughs> Uh, but yeah, once again, like, where would you bring some of this stuff into the lore? You know what I mean? Still very cool, though. That's a pretty badass picture, not gonna lie. I don't know where you get some of these pictures, but, like, shit like this looks really cool. Like, that looks badass. But yeah, see, very cool stuff, but it's just, like, I don't know where you'd, you know, like I've said before, where would you bring this into the lore besides like a one-off book maybe you know i don't know but uh yeah let me know what did you guys think what do you think about these five obscure demons uh which one did you like the most and how would you where would you bring them into the lore and which one would you bring into the lore and how would you do it let me know anyways on that um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did hit that thumbs up button that'd be awesome remember feel free to subscribe to my channel follow me on social media links in the description box below come over and join me on discord there should be a link in the description box to come over and join me uh we can chat more you can suggest videos and stuff like that for me to check out because uh, i'm just kind of like looking around and seeing whatever topic looks pretty cool and just kind of rolling with it so if you have like a specific topic you want me to cover or something like that um yeah just post a link to the video in discord and i'll try to make a video on it but other than that um other than that just stick around more videos are on the way and i will see you guys 
next time.